And welcome back to the Roadshow live stage at the 2017 Detroit Auto Show. My name is Tim Stevens. I'm editor-in-chief of Roadshow, and I'm here with Danny Shapiro, Senior Director of Automotive at NVIDIA. Danny, welcome. You and I both doing the double CES, then straight up here to Detroit. How are you feeling? Great. We've had so much <laughs> fun at CES in Las Vegas now here in Detroit. It's, it's really a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And NVIDIA's been pretty progressive in terms of adding more, more digital horsepower, I keep saying to cars, giving more processing power for these autonomous systems. But I want to talk about the demonstration that you guys were giving at CES first, really giving the opportunity for a lot of people to get inside of an autonomous car for the first time and to sit in the back seat with nobody in the driver's seat and have that car drive them around. What were some of the reactions that you no, got from that demonstration? So, so basically, we took one of our test vehicles. We outfitted it with our AI supercomputer. We call it Drive PX2. Um, it takes sensor inputs. It basically makes sense of what's going on around the car, and then we, we control the vehicle. So we modified a vehicle, uh, brought out to Las Vegas, and we'd set up a course. We um, recognized there's a lot of different conditions that uh, drivers face, and so we built a course that had lane markings for part of it. Some areas there were no lane markings. We had a dirt section. Um, there was areas that it was grass and there was landscaping features on the side like somebody might have on, a, on their driveway. Mm -hmm. And then we also set up cones and construction detours and we'd roll uh, a flashing uh, construction arrow in and roll it out. And so we wanted to show the power of deep learning and the ability to use artificial intelligence to train the vehicle. Uh, essentially, we just had four days before the show t to train it. The car showed up in Vegas, didn't know anything other than had the base layer of software, but we trained it, we didn't program it. So we put people in the back seat, you're absolutely right, and we would then, um, we had a remote switch to start the car, and it started driving, and people were amazed. It's absolutely, <laughs> it's, it's an incredible experience, right? Looking at the steering wheel of a car and watching it drive, and there's nobody there. I've been lucky enough to, to be, in a, be in a few cars that can do that, so I, I don't want to say it's old hat, but I'm getting used to it. But definitely that first experience, the first time you let a car take you somewhere, and the first time you really put your faith in this technology, obviously that was a controlled course. Uh, but definitely that's opening a lot of people's eyes, I think, and a lot of people are a little skeptical of this technology, so demonstrations like that are great. So I'm glad to see more people getting in. And we were talking before about how more and more people are having that opportunity, and ultimately I think it really is about getting people the chance to try that out, right, to change their minds? Absolutely. And so deep learning is important, you know, AI, is, is a, a very, very important thing, and learning is an important thing, and we're reading about so many millions of miles being covered by these autonomous cars to figure out different situations and that kind of thing. But ultimately, these cars have got to get better about how they learn, and that's part of this process as well, right? Not just throwing more processing power, and not just throwing millions and millions of miles, but actually changing the way that they, they learn, and, and they learn from us, right? Well, absolutely. I think what we're dealing with, of course, is a car. Um, safety is first and foremost. If something goes wrong, there can be a bad outcome. So our focus absolutely is on safety and using artificial intelligence though to drive much better than a human could. So yeah. I think there's a combination of a car learning from humans, but it's not really learning from you or I. It's mm -hmm. not my 14 year old daughter who's going to get her permit soon. It's not going to learn from her, but instead it's learning from um, professional drivers and also we're doing simulation like in a lab environment. So we can train a car how to drive and how to react appropriately to all different types of scenarios and potential hazards. And from that, then we're going to do a massive amount of testing. And that testing will happen in on-road testing with our fleets of drivers and our customers' drivers, but we'll also use simulation to test. So if we've developed an AI system that can recognize um, people jaywalking or dogs running in the street, mm -hmm. we can run simulation tests to create those scenarios rather than actually putting human life or dogs in harm's way. And then we can validate that before we put it out on the public roads. And I think one thing that was great just yesterday at the Volvo stand, right? the first keys to the, the Volvo in the Drive Me program were handed over to a family in Sweden. Right, yeah. And so that program has started um, where 100 XC90s on the road to the public, um, they're driven by the NVIDIA Drive PX2. So our AI supercomputers in those cars taking all that sensor data and enabling those cars to drive themselves. And that is a really exciting announcement. That's the first time that these autonomous cars have been put in the hands of actual consumers. I don't think four or five years ago, anybody would have thought that by 2017, we'd have fully autonomous cars on the road, limited circumstances, only right. in Germany, only in Gothenburg, or excuse me, only in Sweden, only in Gothenburg. Uh, but ultimately, that's, that's really exciting stuff. Yeah, I think the key thing here is, this isn't testing the technology. We're not going to do that on customers. Sure. But this is testing how they interact. It's a research project from the sense of observing what does that family do in the car? How do they get more time back from 
normally would be spent in their commutes. And how do other cars interact with the self-driving cars? So I think it's a really valuable and important uh, program that they've developed. And there's also uh, a lot of learning that can be made from the mobile industry and from other technologies and that kind of thing as well. You know, obviously teaching AI is important, but also learning things as far as device engineering goes and, and mobile chips and that sort of thing, which is something that you guys can bring to the table better than anybody else. You know, NVIDIA has been making uh, mobile chipsets for a long time and ultimately graphics card chipsets too. Right. But how does that sort of consumer technology then transfer over to the automotive industry? I think what we're seeing is a compressing of time cycles and development cycles. Um, consumer electronics move much more quickly than the automotive industry, and I think we're seeing then the automotive industry not necessarily go on the exact same timeline, mm -hmm. um, but compress that. I think it's critical, of course, in the automotive space that we go through the testing and validation that is so important to the auto industry. Um, and so I, think you, I don't think you'll ever see these two different industries in lockstep. Um, we go through an incredible amount of validation on the product. But again, I think the key part is we're able to leverage the massive amounts of computing and the concept of the software being updated over the air mm. to make the product better. So we're doing this with Tesla, we're doing it with some of our other customers so that once you purchase the car, the car continues to get better and better and better over time through a software and update. And that's really not something that consumers are used to. You, you, you're lucky if your car gets an update once a year at this point, or I don't want to say lucky, maybe it's lucky is the wrong word, but it's rare that you get more than one update a year. But as we're talking about cars getting smarter and also more secure, that's got to be something that happens more often, and that's something that I think the automotive industry could learn a lot from the mobile device I, industry. I think the security thing point that you raise is, is key. In many cases, the, the cars that are on the road today were not the, the computing systems were not architected with security in mind. They were an incremental mm. approach where more and more things start getting added to the cars, and then all of a sudden now they're connected. Uh, what we focus on is building a secure system from the start and then building the car around it. And so encryption and authentication and other computing techniques that are used in the data center to ensure the data is secure um, are what we focused on. So let's talk about the actual hardware of this system. You know, I, I'm used to, I've been in a lot of prototype autonomous cars and you pop the trunk and it, it's just a mess in there. There's computers everywhere. But how, how discreet and how compact are we talking about getting these systems down to? Well, so our, our current Drive PX2, it, it basically has the power of 150 of your MacBooks here. It's about the size of a license plate today. Wow. And this is what over 80 different automakers and tier one suppliers and other startups are using in their self-driving car efforts. Mm -hmm. um, that was what was in our, our test vehicles. We also put one in an Audi Q7 and we were doing similar tests in Las Vegas. We just introduced our, our next generation that will come out at the end of 2017. And so we're shrinking down from a license plate to a module you know, a little bit bigger than a, a deck of cards. And what do you have to worry about as far as cooling goes? Because obviously the deployment in a car is very different than the deployment here in a laptop. We're talking about circumstances where you might be up in northern Alaska, let's say, very, very cold, or in, in you know, a very hot desert environment. It's got to work across this range yeah, of absolutely. temperatures. How does that get affected? Everything we do it needs to be automotive grade. Mm -hmm. um, the, the processors we put in PCs or we put in mobile devices um, are consumer grade. So we have an entirely new uh, developed process over the last decade to make them auto grade, to ensure that at those freezing temperatures in Alaska to summers in Arizona, uh, your car will start and everything will power up. I think we've probably experienced some situations, you know, maybe even here in Detroit, where if you're trying <laughs> to use your phone outside eventually, yeah. after a couple of minutes, it's just going to shut down because it's too cold. Absolutely. Um, we ensure that, that our products are auto grade from a temperature perspective, from a dust, shock, vibration, all of these different characteristics going to building uh, our solutions for our DrivePX computers. And a lot of gamers are very familiar with the idea of upgrading their NVIDIA graphics chips, especially as we're moving to a VR world, and a lot of people are pulling out their old GFX cards and popping in new ones. Is that something we might ever see in the automotive world? Might I someday pop the trunk in my car and pull out the autonomous brain in my car and pop in a new one to add new functionality? It, it, it's possible. Um, I think the, the notion of having modular components in the cars is nothing new, and many mm -hmm. of our customers um, out in the Volkswagen group and, and others um, have a whole modular design. Whether you do it yourself, whether you do it at the dealership, um, I think those are all uh, potential options. But I think at the same time, when we're talking about infotainment system, it's one thing we're right. talking about the self-driving car, human lives are at stake here. And the testing and validation, I think as we talked about, um, is critical. 
So I'm not sure that we would want uh, to be messing around with the electronics of, of a self-driving system I think system you could put yourself. stickers on the side to identify what kind of uh, graphics horsepower there is in your car. It'd be pretty sweet. I think there's a new marketing opportunity for you, Danny. So maybe you can take that back with you and we'll see how that goes. Danny, thanks so much. Uh, we had a panel earlier uh, this week as well, which was great to speak with you then. Awesome updates from NVIDIA and we're really excited to see how this technology comes to fruition and comes to the market. It's great to see.